Hello everyone, this is Kurode giving you a shoutcast between Mad Frog and Cast here on Scrap Station. Yesterday I cast a game between Cast and Mad Frog on Lost Temple, liked the game so much, tried to find another game that they um, played, and this was actually part of that series. So hopefully the game will be just as interesting with crazy builds, or if not, hopefully the game will still be entertaining. Back over here to the north we have, or sorry, the north side, yeah, at the one o'clock position we have Mad Frog spawning as the Red Zerg player here on Scrap Station. Meanwhile, we have Cass spawning over here as the um, purple Terran player um, at the 3 o'clock position. Now, Scrap Station is one of those maps, only two spawning locations, but the walking distance between these two locations is actually very far, just because of these two sets of destructible rocks here and here. They are easily taken down by Marauders and ro Roaches and Hydralis. However, the Zerglings and Marines will have quite some time to get through that very, very thick and rock armor of base three, reducing a Zergling attack down to two and a Marine attack, Marine attack down to three. So I don't expect these rocks to be cleared out anytime too quickly. We'll see if Cast tries to go for any sort of mass Reaper play. Mass Reaper play has been pretty common recently, from what I've seen, just because. Um, uh, pretty soon Terran players will not be able to use it as effectively. The Reaper cost or the Reaper time will now go up from 40 build time to 45. So that is a significant amount of time to just to build one Reaper that's a one food unit. Now we have an SCV moving out and we'll be able to do some early scouting. Will, will it be able to find an early hatchery? And yes, it will. Mad Frog going for a 15 hatchery and not having a spawning pool just quite yet. Now that's a very, that's not too big of a gutsy move because we did see Mad Frog come in with this over Overlord and the Overlord saw that the barracks was being placed right here. So with that, Mad Frog knew that he could throw down this hatchery and not have to worry about it for a little bit of time as there's not going to be any crazy rush to, with a proxy reaper, um, a proxy barracks reaper rush over here. Back over here, we now see the spawning pool and the extractor coming into play as that SCV gaining sight. SCV should know that that spawning pool was just laid down and based upon his own food, he should realize that there is a hatchery over here. Back over here, Cast now upgrading to that orbital command center, seeing that 17 over 19 food. Overlord does not want to stick around by this marine. Marine will be able Able to shoot it out out of the sky and now as cast is able to get sight onto the mad frogs hatchery he knows that most likely it will not be any sort of baneling baneling bust or baneling sort of play just because um, you really want to do banelings mainly off of one map but i have seen um, a baneling bust off of or a semi later baneling bust off of two bases We'll see how that all works out. But anyways, we're going to see a factory now come into position here. And most likely one more production building will be placed here. And this very, very wide ramp will be shut down. Now, um, Orbital Command continuing to train up more and more units as we're now getting more drones over here. We do have the hatchery now training up one queen over here and another queen over here as well. So both sides, Mad Frog trying to get that very, very strong economic advantage. Now, Mad Frog really liking Mutalis play. Perhaps he thinks that they're similar to Gargoyles in Warcraft 3. May try to um, go into a foregast in just a little bit. And because of this short um, chasm and short flying distance between these two bases, Mutalis play is a definite possibility we should see at some port some point some sort of engineering bay to come in or perhaps a starport with a reactor in order to and um, shoot those mutilists out of the sky with that viking support however vikings not as strong against mutilists as opposed to say turrets missile turrets attack very very quickly and deal i believe four times the amount of damage as an unupgraded marine so that's how effective they are with a range of seven so that's and really really powerful down goes cast scv scouting scv activating this elnaga watchtower as we now have this overlord sitting in this position we may get one viking early trained up just in order to try to shoot down this um, overlord that's in position no now gonna go ahead and go for banshees it looks like yeah doing that tech lob swap and oh coming down is it going to be enough that uh, scv or that one Zergling now getting taken down, and will it be a Banshee? That is going to be the key question there. Yes, it is going to, it is going to be Banshee play. Mad Frog needs to get perhaps one or two more queens in order to hold this off. We do see the Evolution Chamber. Evolution Chamber only takes 35 units of time to build, and then a spine or a Spore Crawler also doesn't take that long to build either. So a Spore Crawler may be built in time before this Banshee will be coming into play. Back over here, Cast, I do not see any sort of 
I don't see any missile turrets um, just quite yet. We are up, no, not upgraded the tier two just quite yet. So Mad Frog not upgraded the tier two will not be able to get any sort of mutilist for quite some time. No hydralist either. We do see a spore crawler, two spore crawlers now being, or three spore crawlers now being um, morphed into play. No spore crawlers over here. Perhaps we should, you know, there's going to be one spore crawler and a queen. So out moves this banshee. One banshee now moving, now being trained, uh, also getting a medevac and also getting that cloaking research. So very nicely done cast changing it up a little bit we'll get four marines perhaps we're going to try to move out with this one banshee banshee would not be effective in this harassment because of the spe three spore crawlers mad frog predicting those banshees very well with the help of that overlord here but with those marines and hellions on the ground they may be able to deal a significant damage anyways we do see three hellions being trained and the infernal pre-igniter research has been completed so the out moves this medevac the medevac may try to come into position here try to toast down some of these drones and that will deal some damage however mad frog knows about this and zergling's not going to go over go over and try to do something over here but now that banshee is going to go ahead and try to do some harassment against this spore crawler the spore crawler however with a very fast attack speed almost does and does not do as much damage as a missile turret, but the spore crawler has base better armor and also and sorry better armor oh in comes a queen so queen able to start doing damage over here will the hellions yeah hellions gonna be dropped off over here and then they just may run run straight in to try to get some of these drones mad frog's drones are very well just a completely vulnerable here and now five drones already getting killed are we gonna get another line of shots no no line of shots there another set of drones getting taken down and mad frog taking horrible losses here taking down losing almost all but five or six of these drones at his natural expansion that was pretty well saturated we do have a banshee now moving out over here army wise we see cast sitting at 800 mad frog sitting at 575 and he's got to have a fair amount of gas now yeah he's sitting on 700 gas so as soon as we see a spire coming into play yeah that spire now being trained we will see a lot of mutilists and those mutilists will be able to deal significant damage zergling is now going to try perhaps try to do some sort of run by not going to be able to get into this position one hellion on uh, one hellion and marines on this side will just be able to splash and deal so much damage toward those zerglings as now we're trying to get double vikings out of this starport with that reactor barracks now being placed down and now we're getting missile turrets so cast now suspecting that there are going to be mutilists at this stage in the game as some sort of counter-attack yeah now coming in with that evolution chamber or trying to take down that spire over here but a queen getting being able to reveal that banshee with the help of that spore crawler taking some damage here so queen now down to 66 hit points this is going to be very bad if this queen gets shot down down to one hit point will it be able to escape oh barely able to escape there nicely done as now production wise we now nearly have this spire as soon as this spire completes i expect to see a lot a lot of mutilists perhaps seven maybe even eight mutilists being trained up if he can hold on to um, get that amount of minerals does he have enough um larva is the question sitting on six larva right now and that um we are gonna get that that spawn larva ability to come out in just a moment so yeah as soon as that spire is done we are going to get a lot of mutilists so now one three six mutilists already being trained as two vikings now move out those vikings gonna go overlord hunting perhaps to try to supply lock mad frog mad frog however sitting at 62 over 84 will be all right and now getting up to 11 mutilists so those 11 mutilists will be able to do a lot of serious harassment and now getting the level one attack upgrades so without a lot of marines we do see one medevac there is no stim packs however on these marines so these marines are not going to be able to shoot down those units too quickly and now zerglings quickly taking dealing some damage over here just trying to keep track of, the, of any sort of expansion attempts and now there's going to be orbital command laying into this position over here we do see what a couple of zerglings however now in comes a group of six mutilists mutilists just pushing through taking down that banshee so easily and now finishing off the rest of those hellions gonna get some quick splash damage in perhaps chaining that damage onto those marines and those marines now coming over and vikings now joining in on that fight medevac trying to get in some heals one down goes one mutilist another mutilist now trying to pull back but we are going to reach a critical number of mutilists in just a mu moment mutiling definitely coming around the corner as mad frog training up 18 zerglings and already has seven mutilists here so taking a look at the unit combination we have 12 mutilists four more mutilists coming in to join in on this fight or five more joining in on this fight so we're going to have 12 mutilists and zerglings try to push through here will it be enough mutilists now going to be able to take down those vikings very easily one two rounds of attack and down they go that splash damage just spreading across all of those units over there and now continue to take down more and more units another viking taken down and yeah, cast just in trouble as the critical number of mutilists are in the sky. No Thors. So Madfrog doesn't even need to worry about the magic box technique. 
in order to save any of his units over here. We do have a couple Zerlings over here waiting. Perhaps they can do some sort of run by into this base, but it looks as though they're just trying to control the expansions over here. And now Mutal is going to run, no, not going to fly into the main base yet. There are missile turrets just being produced. Is it going to be enough? Trying to take down some more of these production buildings here. Zergling is now running rapid through this and, and mineral line here. And as these Mutalists start taking down more and more of these medevacs, cast, yeah, just definitely in, in trouble. Unable to really do anything here. Too many Mutalists to... And really do anything about as four more mutilists will be joining this army in just a moment so more mutilists coming in and mutilists just trying to take down the last of those vikings zerglings doing their job on the ground mutilists doing their job in the air and yeah cast has to say gg at some point we do have zerglings still seen over here they could run down and clean up those missile turrets very easily over here we have 13 mutilists still and flying about and production wise we have what six mutilists about to join the army once again taking a look back at mad frog mad frog's harvester count 34 harvesters compared to cast is four yeah zergling is completely destroying here running down this ramp cleaning up the rest of this base and cast cannot really do anything else his mining rate is now going to be a big fat zero as he's unable to mine anymore and he's going to be forced to say gg just waiting for it waiting for the buzzer waiting for the fat lady to sing as nothing's really happening bunkers now trying to be put into position here to try to hold off and just salvage this game however the army size 2100 versus 1000 and when a lot of those units are marauders there's not much you can do and cast does say gg so really well played by mad frog in this mad in this matchup mad frog getting that early expansion and then getting that critical gas didn't tech to tier two too quickly made sure that he had a lot of zerglings and had and with proper scouting was able to get those spore crawlers up in time to protect himself from any sort of banshee harassment um, like i'm really liking mad frog's play in this instant as he was just never fighting in the dark and always one step um, or just walking alongside cast whatever he cast tried to throw at him mad frog was already in preparation getting those spore crawlers getting that evolution chamber quite in time thanks for watching thanks for listening i hope you guys enjoyed this replay between cast and mad frog here on scrap station